Yes, sir. Okay, this video here today is a response to my buddy by the... Oh, I'm not going to say your name. I don't know if you want me to do that. I'm just going to read your, uh, your message you sent me a week ago. I'm sorry for this delay. Uh, yeah, so let's see. Let's go ahead and read it. So I currently am fluent in English and French, and I have high level of German proficiency. I also have basic knowledge of Italian, Spanish, Swedish, Danish, and Norwegian. Since I have no time to take courses in, the, in education or translation, I was wondering if you could recommend any books that would give some background to foreign language teaching techniques and translation methods. While I currently do both as part of my studies, I would like to do some more formal learning in both fields to better round myself as a polyglot. Are there any books you could recommend? Thanks. Thank you for your time. Okay, so uh, first of all, there I should say that there they may have some books out there for uh, teaching techniques, but I think the best way to become a, a good teacher of languages is through like experience, just just through experience of uh, exploring different languages. Now, if you study just one language. Um, I don't want to say it's. I don't want to say it's impossible to become a good teacher for languages, but your techniques you might not have like a very effective technique for teaching because you don't have like that much experience studying other languages. Like for example, um, I started with Chinese first. I didn't know. I was just so motivated to learn Chinese. I, I just went out and got the books. Didn't really know what books to get. Um, and start listening to audio and, and was just learning phrases and words and then just practice on native speakers. I didn't really have a methodology for for <clears throat> for um, learning Chinese. But then once I started learning other languages, I, I branched off to Japanese. And I remember when I first started learning Japanese, I was like, how can a human being learn this language? Because, you know, Japanese is S-O-V, you know, it's the subject object verb language and then it's completely different from English. So when I got those books, I was going through them, you know, trying to learn certain things. And I was like, wow, this this is nothing like English. It's, it's, it's totally different. I don't know how an individual could learn a language like this. So that's when I started really memorizing things and not focusing too much on grammar. That's what Japanese made me study that way to not focus on too much grammar because at the beginning I realized that if I do that it probably will take me a long time to actually start um, you know speaking the language so I just started memorizing things and as time went by I was I was building more and more sentences and I, I went back I think two years later I went back and got a grammar book and um, everything started making sense to me so from there, I start. I start learning Korean, and you know the, the structure is the same, for uh, the same as Japanese. Then from there, I was doing like Arabic, and then I went over and did some other language, like what Southeast Asian languages, uh, Vietnamese. Then you got Hmong, and you got. That's when I started getting crazy with other languages. So, um, yeah, if it if it wasn't for my experience. You know just going you know learning different types of languages then I don't think I would have like a I don't think I would have came up with an FLR technique like a way to um, to learn the things efficiently more efficiently so that's that that's the uh, that's why I always tell people you know like tr just go explore you know just you know choose choose a language choose, choose a couple languages learn them to at least an intermediate level you know uh, you want to get past a, a, a beginner's level, a survival level. You want to get past that that level. I would say get to at least an intermediate, low intermediate, and you will start to notice that wow, I'm starting to come up with different techniques on learning, and you know, you can just you know when you go teach someone else, you can just teach them in the way you taught yourself. You see, but like if you go, let's say, <clears throat> normally in a university, most of the teachers they're following a curriculum. They're just following the same curriculum that was taught to them. It's not based off of their experience. They may be excellent at the language, native speaker or whatnot, but they don't have really, they really don't have an effective um, 
methodology for teaching someone a language. That's because they haven't explored. They don't have experience learning other languages. And I truly believe that when you learn other languages, it will help you to come up with like really good techniques on learning. You don't have a choice. You may, you know, you try this technique, say, oh, this is not working. I did, now I'm gonna go try this, try that. You know, different families, you gotta just work in different ways. So, yeah, um, I don't know of any other textbooks out there or textbooks at all for teaching, teaching um, techniques, but I would recommend you just go ahead and <laughs> just, you know, I see that you, you said that you got what? You said Danish, Norwegian, Swedish. That's great. You should branch off in some other families too, just to get some experience. That way you can come up with your own methods. You know, that's that's what I did. I didn't read any any textbooks say, okay, you teach the way teach that way, because you can only teach yourself. You know, you eventually you're gonna have to teach yourself. And then eventually when you try to teach uh, others, it's like I always say that you can't teach someone a language. You can teach certain aspects of a language, but you're mainly going to um, show these these students if they don't know what to do if they don't want to explore on, explore on their own then you can just show them the way show them that okay you can follow this step follow that step and then later on they'll come up with their own you know method if they decide to branch off into other languages that that that's on them so um, yeah so I would say go ahead and explore you know uh, choose some Asian languages, Middle Eastern languages, African languages, you know, and then uh, over the years, you'll come up with your uh, different, you know, different techniques for, for learning. I mean, you can see people who, like these polyglots, these people that can speak multiple languages, they, they, most of the time, they learn languages independently. They don't take these languages at school. And when they, you know, when they learn independently, they, over the years, they come up with different methods. And they, that's why they're able to pick up so many different languages, because they, they 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 um, finding different ways, exploring different ways on learning the language. So, yeah, I hope I um, I hope this video helped you, and um, this would be a good recommendation for you. But I would say just keep exploring. You know, everyone should explore. You know, so we don't have to get on uh, try to attain native fluency. You know, a lot of people are on this thing about getting native fluency, but when you start learning multiple languages. If you're not going to this, these countries, you're not going to attain native fluency. It's just reality. If I'm doing like 30 languages, I'm not about to reach native fluency in all 30 languages when I'm here. That's 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 impossible. I'm going to say it's impossible. And people say, you know, nothing, nothing is impossible, but it is impossible to get to native like fluency in 30 languages in your own country unless you 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 have to have a, a special situation to, to become native in 30 languages. It's not it's not going to happen. You know, that's a hard level to obtain. So I would just say choose some languages, get to at least an intermediate, lower intermediate level. It doesn't take that long, you know, uh, depending on the time you have. And, you know, just, just learn from that experience. So um, this is why I always tell people to just explore. It's a good thing. So, yeah, that's it for this video. And um, like I said, I hope I um, helped you. I hope this was a good recommendation for you. And uh, I wish you luck on your studies for, what, Finnish? Finnish and Estonian. All right, take it easy. Look forward to you guys' comments, or if you have any questions, just send me a private message, and I'll try to get back to you ASAP.